What's up guys? Before we get into today's video, I just wanted to let you guys know we're hosting a webinar in uh, mid-August. There'll be a link in the description below with uh, different times. There's gonna be two live webinars. It's going to be on the ways that we find Chinese manufacturers. So the way our company, Source Fine Asia, researches and vets Chinese manufacturers. And then there'll be a little bit of a bonus in terms of how we sort of elevate our relationships with them. Speaking of elevate, the name of the method that we use is called the SAFE method. So if you guys have checked out our ebook, you should be a little bit familiar with this. So S stands for search, A stands for assess, F stands for finalize, and E stands for elevate. So I hope to see you guys on that live webinar. Again, link is in the description. Sign up today. There's only gonna be a limited amount of seats. I believe we're only taking about 50 people on the first webinar. If there's a huge demand, then we might increase that, but sign up today so you don't miss your spot. What's up guys, it's Rico here, CEO of Source Find Asia. I'm back with another one. This is a YouTube slash podcast. I'm sitting here with Luke Delanoy, our new marketing intern. You want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, my name is Luke. I'm from uh, Ottawa, Canada. Uh, just finished school not too long ago and came out here. Got the opportunity to come out here and uh, be the marketing and content development intern. So here I am. Only six o'clock in the morning and my heartbeat is out of control Ten minutes into boarding feels like I'm about to explode Time for the ride up, tension started to swirl I can't believe I'm gonna free fall from the top of the world Since it's peaked with a crazy anticipation Feeling like this, tell me how the hell can I be patient Jumpsuit rig, Google helmet all in place Double checking just in case, I'm elated baby Freedom, one green light away, and I just can't wait. Every time you wanna feel freedom in your life, just go skydiving, baby, go skydiving, yeah. Every time you wanna feel freedom in your life, just go. All right, so um, let's start with how did you come across the, the channel? Uh, I came across it. Did you come across the channel first or the podcast? I came across, I believe it was the channel first. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've been following your stuff for a while. Um, you know, I, I tried sourcing stuff uh, on my own with my friends and came across your channel, you know, YouTubing how to source from China and that kind of stuff. So I had watched uh, your videos before and that's kind of how I found you and then when I saw the ad about the intern, I just applied and... So I guess you, you found, I think you told me like you found Nick's channel first? Yeah, so I guess going back in my history, like I was looking, I was always interested in Amazon FBA and that kind of stuff. And there's a whole bunch of stuff on the internet right now about it. So you kind of have to pick like people who you, who you find commonality with or who you can like something in common mm -hmm. and I just remember seeing that first video of Nick and he was like just bearing his soul out to the world in like his dorm room saying like listen like this is my journey and it was like that that his first YouTube video ever mm -hmm. and uh it really connected with me because he's a Toronto guy and I don't know I could really relate and then you know fast forward a little bit he posted more videos and one of you came up and so that's kind of how I, I found your channel and subsequently the podcast and all that. Cool. And then one day you were browsing YouTube and then you saw the ad. Yeah, it was, I mean, yeah, it was just, uh, I remember it was like this past January and I didn't really know what to do. Always looking for new opportunities and uh, came across your ad and... At first, I was like, oh, I'm never going to get this. So I, I put it down, kind of put it away back in my mind, and then talked to my friends about it. And uh, a couple of days later, I was like, fuck it, let's do it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think I even, I think I said it in the ad, and I, I say it on the website. It's like, I'm open to any person applying, you know, like as long as they have some relevant experience. Um, like I'm not somebody who's like, oh, we need to get this person with X amount of qualifications like or this much um, 
five years of experience is like, no, like if you are, if you are familiar with YouTube and familiar with any sort of content creation, like you can apply for the job. Of course, I'm then going to like interview a bunch of people and try to make a decision based off of who I think is the best, but I'm, I'm like, I'm not biased in that way. You know? um, I even had, we even had somebody apply who was like a mechanical engineer I had no experience <laughs> in content creation whatsoever. But I, I still interviewed her. Like I still sat down with her and, and asked her why she was trying to do this job instead of what she's like studying. And then she was, she gave me her reasoning. But I just figured, like in that situation, when you have zero experience and you're like not well, I'm not saying that engineers are not creative, obviously. But like if you're not f- familiar with the way YouTube videos are made and the way content is made, and you don't consume any content, then it's just going to be a huge learning curve, right? So. Um, what talk to me about like okay so we had the first interview I think we probably did two because I think I interviewed you first and then probably had an interview with Mike um, talk to me about what was going through your mind during that time period when we were interviewing you and like what um, what was your how did you feel about the interviews like that just bring me back to where your mind was at at the time um, I was just really excited about the opportunity to get to talk to you and Mike, just because I feel like I put you guys up like on such a high pedestal, but then talking to you guys, you're just like normal everyday guys at the end of the day. Um, and going through the process, it was, I feel like you guys say a lot of what you're thinking on the podcast Mm -hmm. and in the YouTube channel or YouTube videos. So I was listening to a lot of you guys all the time. So then, when it came to actually talking to you guys, I felt like I had a lot of what you guys were going to ask or I knew kind of what you guys were thinking and looking for. So mm-hmm. I would kind of base my answers off that. And so so you, you pretended to be somebody else? <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to fake it till you make it. But on the other hand, it was just like I knew I could fill the role. It was just a question of kind of getting to know you guys better. Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, like at the end of the day, Part of the reason why we put out the, the content the way that we do it is not just for our clients. We want to work with clients that sort of understand who we are and are comfortable with us. But then as, at the same time, yeah, if you are going to apply for a job with us and stuff like that, like you already have, if you listen to 20, 30, 40 episodes of the podcast, you will get a feel for the kind of people that we are and the kind of people we want to work with, right? So, um, okay. So then what about... When you okay, when I tell you like, yeah, Luke, I think we want to move forward with you. Uh, you tell your friends and family, and like, what's the reaction in it amongst your like social circle and stuff? Um, I think a lot were a bit surprised of of me wanting to come out here, just because I mean, I tell my close friends what I'm doing, and they're very supportive. But a lot of them were just like, "Whoa, China!" Yeah, just because it's so foreign back home. And you hear like all the news reports and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I think it was just intrigue. Um, And yeah, just very excited for me. And just like, what are you doing? But also just like, go for it. Mm, That's that's cool. So you had a pretty support. You said your parents are pretty supportive, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that helps a lot in coming out here just because it's so far. (laughs) Um, but yeah, no, for sure. Okay. And then I guess first impression, since you've been here now for a little bit over 10 days, what, 12, 13 days? Yeah. Guangzhou as a whole is such an interesting city. There's so much history that, you know, like I come from Ottawa where it's like, or Canada as a whole is only 150 years old, but just diving back into like the last even a hundred years of China, there's so much history. And then you you realize like you're in a place of such it's so big and there's so much to see and do that it's a bit overwhelming sometimes but you also learn to love it yeah i think that was the biggest thing i felt because i mean yeah you could we could sit around and talk about like china being 1.4 plus billion people but like it's hard to even even after been, having been here for almost five years, it's like it's hard to really wrap your brain around that amount of people in one space. Um, but then the thing is, people always feel like because there are such so many people, they just feel like it's going to be super packed and crowded. 
But the first thing I noticed when I came here was like, you have, you know, four or five lane roads everywhere. And there's, there's so much space on the sidewalk, giant sidewalks and stuff like that. Whereas like in Toronto, like I felt Toronto was more crowded, especially the downtown areas, way more crowded than here, you know? Um, you definitely have like peak hours in the subway and stuff that where people get packed in like sardines, but for in general, like it, you do have a lot of space when you're walking around in the city. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I can totally relate to that. Was, was there any, um, was there a major difference in what you thought this place was going to be versus what you, versus your initial experiences? Uh, I honestly tried to come in with zero expectations in the sense that like I didn't try to build it up to be something different. Mm -hmm. I was just coming here to soak up as much as I could. Uh, and then the city as a whole, I kind of expected it to be this huge city, mm -hmm. which it is, but yeah, like it is super big, but there's also parts of the city that are super quiet and there's still a lot of people but you still feel like you have a lot of room mm -hmm. uh, like along the river um it's just really peaceful there and like there's definitely areas you can go kind of to get away from it all what were some of your initial challenges when you first arrived in china i think the biggest thing is the ability to not like you can't really communicate with everyone mm -hmm. um and have a conversation with everyone like, I think the most, the longest conversation I had with anyone was with Mike, and that was only in, like, day three. So, um, but, yeah, you just kind of have to adapt and learn a couple things, and Google translates your friend. Yeah, yeah. Google translates your best friend. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things that um, Carl and I always talked about is how, you you really learn how to work and hustle in China because because of that there's like less distractions right like the fact that there's a language barrier there's a cultural barrier which would, and especially if you're coming here for work it's you you're basically just gonna throw yourself into the grind and then on top of that you'll start to notice as you're here for a while like everything's always open all the time it's like six seven days a week people working right so you it's it's sort of infectious in that in that way. Um, Okay, so initial challenges with that. Uh, what about, so this is day four, first official week in the office. How's, how's the work going? The work is really good um, because it's like marketing and content is just, it's, I would say it's relatively easy work in the sense that like most people know how to use YouTube, Instagram and all those. It's just staying on top of everything um, and then keeping on top of your tasks as far as the work goes it's pretty easy and as as you just mentioned like because there's a language barrier and because like it's a bit harder for 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 us to like go out and to the pub and just meeting random people like i'm finding it's a lot easier to just focus on the work all the time which is probably a good thing well you could do that you just have to go because again it's you've only been here for like one weekend yeah. Um, there are like that's why this weekend I want to show you around a little bit more. There are definitely places that you could connect with um, people your age and like at a bar and whatever. But they're going to be expats for the most part. Yeah. And then there'll be the the few Chinese people that are fluent in English that also hang out in the same spots. Yeah. yeah. Until you start to learn Chinese and you'll be able to connect with people um, on a deeper level. Um, we've this is your first official week in the office, but we've been working together since I would say March or April. Yeah. Um, how am I, <laughs> how am I as a boss? <laughs> I would say you're pretty reasonable. Um, you're pretty like, with me at least, you're pretty like laid back as long as I just do the work and mostly just keep up with the Slack messages and all that. Um, yeah, it's been very, you're very easy to talk to and like, very easy uh, managerial style, so it's it's been super reasonable. Okay, and I guess you're getting adjusted to the sort of the systems and stuff because obviously we had you plugged into Slack and Google Drive before, but not really some of the other apps that that we use and the daily routine of like the morning meetings and all that stuff. Like, how's that been so far? 
It's been good. I think. Um, and the billboard diary and all that. Yeah, it's all stuff that like I see what you're doing with, and I I understand it. So it's just a question of yeah, I'm still getting used to it, but it's super. Like I understand why you do it, so I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll write my the diary and like stuff I did today and all that, and then as far as all the other systems, I think they're great. And like, if you ever lost on something, you you know you like you can just either Google it or watch watch the videos you did or or look the up SOPs all the systems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I I uh, I, I find. Because you're the second intern, well, yeah, second intern that we have. Um, I find that like Westerners tend to get it a little bit faster, like in terms of why we're doing all this stuff. Um, I when we've hired local people, I've had to like get them on board with some of the things because they feel like maybe it's a little bit tedious. But the reality is, especially if you're running a, like a remote team, um, and then in a place like China where culturally there's some differences you have clients that are from another country and you're dealing with you have employees that are from this country you have to have these kind of systems and tracking and like ways for us to find a document from a year ago it has to be up in google drive you know what i mean it's like that kind of stuff but from an administrative standpoint as an employee i can understand how it's tedious but if you understand why we're doing it then you know people tend to jump on board eventually yeah and i think especially having the Slack and a lot of the stuff Google-based, uh, because my first couple of months were remote, it helped a lot. Yeah. Um, just because I could kind of get a feel of, like, if you wanted to do something or if Mike needed some video editing done, like, I knew exactly where to go, what to do, and that kind of thing. And then, you know, our weekly meetings helped a lot, too. Um, just to keep in touch and kind of touch base. Obviously, there's some things working remotely that you just have to be in the office for, right? Yeah. Like setting up a lot of those systems. But once you kind of get going, like you're pretty set to go. Yeah, I mean, even um, Lord, our our video editor, shout out to Lord. <laughs> um, he when when I hired him, he went through and like went through the previous three months of Slack messages to see how I was communicating with the previous video editor. And it's like stuff like that. Like you can't, like if we were communicating via email or WhatsApp or WeChat, it's like, that's just almost impossible to go back and be like, okay, so that's the previous video. Here's a link to the previous video. What was the feedback? Like, you know, like that kind of stuff. Here are the thumbnails. Um, and it's, it's invaluable. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what, I guess, closing question what do you hope to accomplish from your three months, at least three months in China? Um, I think my my biggest thing was just kind of like meeting Mark the other day. He was like, oh, Luke, you're just a sponge. And yeah. I was like, yeah, that's absolutely true. That's kind of why I, I came here is just to be a sponge and to soak Fabiana up. Fabiana said the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, he seems like he just wants to like learn yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's kind of why I came here and kind of why I'm here is just to absorb any any kind of knowledge. I think, like, uh, I subscribe a bit to Gary V, mm -hmm. and, and he's just like, yeah, for all you summer interns out there, just, like, network, 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 and soak up any knowledge you can, and that's kind of what I'm doing here. So. Well, you came to the right place, man. Like, um, yeah. I mean, you already met Mark this weekend. You'll probably meet Felipe and Kosh. Yeah. Um, at some stage, you probably meet Nick Zeber. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna meet a lot of interesting players in the game. Yeah, which is kind of why I came out here and just meet new people. And um, of course, having that experience on my resume is good. But at the end of the day, I just want to learn as much as I can from you guys too. So cool. If people want to reach out to you, how can they get in contact with you? Uh, Instagram is the best way. Uh, Luke Del Na One. On Insta, um, I can put in the show notes. Mm -hmm. All right. And of course, guys, uh, thanks for watching the video. If you want to get in contact with us uh, for the podcast, that's podcast at sourcefinasia.com. Um, if you want to check out the show notes, that's sourcefinasia.com slash made in China. Of course, on YouTube, all the links will be in the description below. And I will see you guys next week. Cheers. Yeah.